In the previous lectures, we have studied design and analysis techniques for 4-bar and 6-bar mechanisms for transferring motion between two bodies or machine elements. In this lecture, we will study another mechanical device to transfer motion. This is called a cam and follower. A cam is a specially shaped piece of metal or other material arranged to move a follower in a controlled fashion. The follower can be a single link or a linkage train and the motion of the follower is oscillatory either in rotation or in translation. In the top picture on the left, this is a cam and the surface of the cam is called the cam profile. This is the follower. The follower here undergoes an angular motion. In the picture on the bottom, this is our cam and this is our follower. The follower here undergoes a translational motion. The goal of this lecture is to design the profile or the surface shape of this cam to achieve a specified follower motion. And the follower motion may be specified only partially. It is assumed the cam is on a rotating shaft, which we call the cam shaft, which is moving at a constant angular speed. Let us first look at a couple of examples of a cam follower system. In this picture, this is a cam that is being rotated by a cam shaft, and this is a translating follower. Here, the motion of the follower is such that initially when the cam shaft rotates, the follower stays at this position. Then the follower rises up to a certain height and stays at that height for certain duration of rotation of the cam shaft. After that, the follower comes down. This is also known as a rise dwell, fall dwell follower motion. The rise motion starts here, it stays here, and then it comes down. In this case, the axis of rotation of the cam shaft was perpendicular to the plane of the translating follower. This is an example where the motion of the follower is along the axis of rotation of the shaft. The groove cut here is the cam profile and as you can see the follower is translating along the axis. The key topics in cam design that we'll cover in the lecture are as follows. We will start out in this module with various definitions, examples and applications of cam follower systems and then we'll give a basic classification of different types of cams and followers. In the second and third module, we will look at different methods for designing motion of the follower from partial specifications of the motion. And in the last module, we will look at cam profile design and introduce associated terminology and metrics for evaluating cam design. Let us first understand the degrees of freedom of a cam follower system. As you will see here, there are three links. The cam is one link, the follower is another link, and the ground is the link one. So L equal to three. There are two one degree of freedom joints, one between the cam and the ground, the other between the follower and the ground. There is one two degree of freedom joint between the cam and the follower. So J2 equals to one. So my degrees of freedom, according to Grubler's formula, is three times L minus one minus two J one minus J two, which gives me one. Now instantaneously, a cam can be thought of as a four bar mechanism. If we look at the contact point and then consider the center of curvature of the contact point on the cam as one moving pivot and the center of curvature of the contact point on the follower as another moving pivot, then the two fixed pivots and these two moving pivots form a four bar mechanism. This four bar mechanism is equivalent to the cam at this configuration. And when I say equivalent, I mean equivalent in terms of kinematics. In particular, you can see that the cam is formed by linkage transformation, by replacing a one degree of freedom joint by two degree of freedom joint, and then by removing this link. So from this direction also, you can see that the degree of freedom of the cam follower mechanism should be one. However, the center of curvature changes as the contact point changes. So the moving pivots effectively changes as the contact point changes. Therefore, the link lengths change as the contact points change. So at each instance, a cam can be equivalent to a four bar mechanism, but at different instances, these four bar mechanisms are different. This fact 
that at each instant a can is equivalent to a forward mechanism can be utilized for performing velocity and acceleration of the cam as though it were a four bar linkage. What you have to do is given the cam profile and the follower profile and the contact point, you have to find these moving pivots, which can be done mathematically. And then you can use all the equations that you have learned for analyzing four bar mechanisms to analyze the kinematics of the cam. In this lecture, we will not focus on that. We will focus on designing this profile of this cam. The main usage of cam follower mechanism is in function generation, where the output motion or the follower motion is a desired function or a given function of the input motion, which is the motion of the camshaft. More mathematically, if theta 2 is the input angle and theta 4 is the output angle, then we are given a relationship between theta 4 and theta 2 and we want to design the cam profile so that this relationship is satisfied. Similarly, when the follower translates, the relationship will be of the form t equal to f of theta 2, where theta 2 is the angle made by the input shaft and d is the distance the follower translates from its zero position. As I said before, the cam follower mechanism is instantaneously either a four bar mechanism when the output motion is angular or a four bar slider crank when the output motion is linear. When viewed as a four bar mechanism, the cam has variable link lengths, which provides more flexibility to generate output function compared to a traditional four bar linkage where the lengths of the links are fixed. However, the disadvantage is that cams are more expensive to make compared to a linkage. So where are cams used? They are used in many different applications. One key application is valve actuation in IC engines. Other applications include motion control in machinery, especially for precise positioning and event timing. And we will see an example of event timing later in the class. Sometimes cam followers are also used for force generation. Now let us get some intuition about the operation of cam mechanisms for IC engines. The figure on the left shows an overhead valve. This is the cam here, this is the follower, and this is the linkage train that is used to operate the valve here. As you will see that as the cam shaft rotates, the valve opens after a certain time, it stays open for a certain time and then it closes. On the right, you see the cams for a V8 engine. So the camshaft is shown here and there are multiple cams on this camshaft. One cam is operating each one of these valves. Now in this picture, the two cams cannot be distinguished clearly, but there are indeed two cams on this camshaft. One of the followers is this green link here. The other follower is this green link. And this mechanism here transfers the motion from the follower to the opening and closing of the valve. As you can see here on the right, during the exhaust phase, the valve opens, then the valve closes, then during the compression phase, the valve remains closed. And in the expansion phase, the valve again remains closed. And then again, during the exhaust phase, the valve will open. Note that in both these cases, the input camshaft was rotating at uniform velocity. So what you obtain here is the uniform velocity of the camshaft is transformed into an intermittent motion that opens or closes the valve. And this is an example of function generation. There are many different types of cams. For example, the cams that we saw on the last slide and what is also shown here are known as radial or plate cams. In radial or plate cams, the axis of rotation of the camshaft is perpendicular to the plane in which the follower moves. Then there are these axial, cylindrical or barrel cams, which is shown here, where the axis of motion of the follower is along the axis of the camshaft. There are also force closed and form closed cams, which we will speak about in the next slide. There are also segmented cams in which a cam profile is made by combining different segments. And there are also three dimensional cams or camoids. In this lecture, we will mainly concentrate on the radial or plate cams. 
there are also different types of followers depending on the shape of the follower that is contacting the cam surface in particular there is the mushroom follower the flat faced follower and the roller follower as shown here in force closed followers the contact between the cam and the follower is maintained by some external force it may be either gravity or spring loading as shown in this pictures here whereas in form closed followers the contact is maintained through the geometry of the cam in this picture here as well as in the axial cam picture that we had seen earlier there is no external loading required to keep the contact of the follower and the cam profile the grooves in the cam mechanism allow the contact to be maintained this concludes our introductory discussion on cams in the next module we'll go into the details of designing cam follower motion given partial specification of motion of the follower